Welcome to a Gibbs CAM demonstration from Midwest CAM Solutions. This demonstration is going to be for basic mill building a part from a blueprint. Well the blueprint we're going to use is a milling part and it has a couple hubs and some holes and some pockets. Well first of all in Gibbs we go to the document and we assign the type of metal that we're going to be cutting and how big the stock is. The origins on the left hub, we have 3.5 plus 1.5 radius, plus I'll put 100 thousandths extra stock. Negative is 0.75 minus 0.1. We have a 1.6 for Y positive, minus 1.6 for the bottom. So what we just did is we defined from here to the edge, from the center up, from the center to the left, and then down. Now we have two circles, a three-quarter inch circle and a three-inch circle. So we're going to go to geometry palette and draw a circle, center point radius. If you had a point, you could click it and wrap around a radius around it, but we'll tell it where the circle is. Going at 0, 0, 0.75, there's more than one. We also have one at 3.5, and the radius is a 1.5. Go to view control, look at top view. We also have now a line at a 45 degree coming from a circle. I'll select a line from a circle, angle tangent. This circle, 45 degrees, draws each one. We want this one, it'll connect and connect that circle to the, uh, the line to the circle. Next, we'll, we'll draw a line parallel to the axes. There's a parallel line at 1.4 in the y axis. So we just drew this line put a circle between two things, we can just say give me a circle, click the two features, type in the size, draws every possibility I want this one, and it'll put that in there and trims it and connects it. The next is we have a fillet here which is a 0.865 down from the 1.5 parallel line. So I'll just draw a circle, the center is going to be 0.865, it's at 1.4 minus 0.25. And then we can click these two features and connect it. Now, the joy of Gibbs Cam drawing is if you need a line or circle to any two things, we just click line, line or circle and go click on the things. We don't have a thousand icons to decipher and why not icon for everything. We just say circle, click two things, tell it the radius size, tell it which one you want, and you're done. So give me a circle between here and there as well, and it'll connect and trim it. Now this arc and this arc are the short sides of the arcs. That's default. We can reverse those arcs. Uh, now we have the outside shape drawn. Work groups are layer control. I like using layers of work groups for information. We'll call this part profile. Each work group will uh, reduce the geometry to just its own and reduce clutter. And we can draw more and design the whole part or maybe start machining right now. So I'll go to Tools and CAM. We have a tool list, a process list, and an operations list. Double click on Tool Tile 1, we can make an end mill. I'll use a one inch end mill for flute. Uh, maybe it's got one inch of flute sticking out here. If you want a tool holder, you can stick it in there. All different types of holders, uh, sizes. Um, you can scroll through and grab different holder configurations. The tool is dropped into process pellet and we'll tell it we want a contour. We're building a process now. These are machining tiles. The depth of cut, minus 1.02 deep. You know, my stock definition, the part's one inch thick, but I'm going to go back and make it a quarter inch thick so I got a little more to grip on. We'll let it go in two passes. I'll leave a stock of ten thousandths in speeds and feeds. Um, and stay in stock is a constraint. It'll trim the tool path to the stock and not actually uh, land on my stock. This is the rough cut. I'll take the same tool and we'll make a finish cut. It'll be one step, zero stock, same speeds. Now, it can click anywhere we want to start cutting and we get these machining markers where we tell it which side to cut on, which direction, where you want to start. If we wanted to end on this line, you could dra drag and drop this black box and tell it to move you know, off there 
but the end feature marker, the endpoint comes with it, you can move it anywhere on that feature. You can also right click and say move end feature here and we're on that feature you want to quit cutting. If I drop and drag it back here where I started, I might just want to end just past this intersection and say do it. Now, even if I tell my tool to start way out here, it will trim that tool path to the stock to where it needs to land. We're on CPR. I had collision checking on. It detected something. What it's detecting is that we have a cutter on the second step where there's not enough flute length. Collision checking is something I generally have on as I'm working. And in my settings, it'll tell me and stop if there's an issue. I'll go to my tool and make the flute length longer. This will, this will make things better. I'll rewind it here. Let it play with the new updated tool. And it doesn't stop now. I got a couple little areas here that we want to remove that the tool didn't get from the contour process. So what we'll do is we'll use a slick little feature called mouse line. I'm going to take my uh, roughing finishing pass and just leave the roughing in there, but we're going to do a line with the mouse line. I'm going to tell it to start here, come in over here, and then come across over here, and then cancel that. I'm going to start on this line on center and do it. I want this tool path to happen first. I'm going to move it up in the front. So now we're going to rewind, play, take those, those two-step cutouts out of there to remove that extra stock, and then go around the perimeter. Okay, now we'll go to the next thing. I'll make a new um, work group. I'll take this geometry first, though. I'm going to copy it, select it, Control c new work group, paste it in there. There's a step, a little land in there. It's a uh, Z minus point 200 area. This arc and this arc, I'm going to reverse it because this is a wall and this is a land. With Kips Cam, you can right click and change features from wall to air. An air wall means open sided. The tool will land outside and remove it. So you can toggle features or select everything and detoggle the ones that you want to preserve and toggle the, the uh, wall to air here. So these are open, these are pockets. In the machine, we can just take the roughing now. We're going to go minus 0.2 deep with it. Um, and I'll just finish it to size. Click the geometry and then do it and it adds the op. And the tool lands outside and cleans up those areas. What's really nice about the air wall technology is that you don't have to create geometry different than the part shape. You don't have to be creative and imagine where a tool uh, shape needs to be to where a tool can clean something up. It just does it automatic, and it's very nice. Well, we got that done now. Let's make a new work group. Looking back at the blueprint, we're going to do these little pockets now. There's a little quarter-inch rib. Um, we need to draw a couple lines and a couple fillets and uh, draw that shape. So we're going to start off with a, with a new work group. And this work group is going to be called Pockets. Start with a line parallel to the axes. We have 3.5 in X plus a 0.125 half rib thickness. Oops, it's an X. And then I have a Y at a 0.125. Draw a couple circles by center point. 3.5 X center, Y zero center. Radius for the bottom one is a 0.625. The radius for the top one is 1.125. Check. Yep. Make sure that's the top radius. Yep, 1.125. Now we can click these and just connect them. You can click, click, right click, connect. Which spot you want it to connect because the line goes through the circle. There's two possibilities. Click the next two. Right click, connect. And then we can also just grab the whole thing by double clicking it and go to auto filleting and put fillets in there with one click. We have a couple bosses that are in here. One's at 33 degrees down from the center and the other is 24 from it. So what we'll do is we'll draw um, a point from point polar, a polar point. The point location is 350 and X, Y, 0. The 3 o'clock is 0. I'm going to go 33 degrees up and the radius that pattern lays on is a yeah, 1.75 diameter divided by 2. And the other one is plus 24, the last one. 
I want to circle by center point, click the point. It's a point 0.200 diameter, point 0.1 radius. We're done. We'll select this, shift mouse drag area, select, duplicate in, we'll make three more at 90 at three and a half. We have now our pockets. Um, we can create a tool, like maybe a finish end mill. I'll create a point 0.125 diameter cutter. If I look at the tool line mouse line, I can see the tool on my mouse to see if this would be a good one to use, and I'll, I'll use it. And we'll grab this cutter, say we're going to rough with it. The depth's going to be a minus um, 0.250 depth. Oops. And I'll take it in two passes, speeds and feeds. And then we're going to tell it to leave a little bit of stock on the island in the pocket. And I'll use the same tool to counter finish everything with zero stock in one step. Maybe speed this up a little bit. Select everything and do it. And I'll just let this render. And it's going in there roughing our pockets out. Now when I rough this, I add out a plunge on. I might want to let it zigzag ramp it in there. We can define the angle and the start point to ramp. Just let it automatically do it. So now as we come in, we're, we're zigzag ramping in this cavity. And you can ramp or helix. You can slow things down to really watch how things are cutting. Now after I got this pocket done, I might want to chamfer all these edges. Now with Gibbscam, when we build processes, we can save them and reuse them. If I deselect, add one to it, because I want to bring in my chamfer process to cut all these right now. So I go to my milling process library I've been building in miscellaneous chamfer mills. I'll grab this little eighth inch chamfer mill, it's set for a five thousandths, and redo it. So what it just did is it created the tool for me, loaded in the process with the ingredients needed to put a five thousandths edge break on all the edges. So after we take our two steps, roughed it, finished everything, and then we chamfered everything. The chamfer process was told to do a 5,000 edge break. The tip is this depth, and this is where the edge is. So it calculates the tip, tip of the tool for me. Another slick feature for rendering is this color mode. I like to have an op color on. I generally don't like red, so sometimes I'll change that to a different color. But if I rewind and play, all these colors represent a different operation. So every operation, which is a different tile, will have its own unique color so we can see what's going on. Well now we got that done we just maybe have a, a hole to build. I'm just going to build a one inch drill. There's a hole in each of those hubs. Two inch drill. If I go back to my part profile I can select these two arcs, copy them, make a new work group, and paste in two separate circles. And I'll just call this a one inch diameter two hole. In my process, I'm going to build a drilling process with a one inch drill. Shoulder depth minus 1.02 deep. Speeds, feeds. Feed and wrap it out. Can cycles. Click the two circles you want to cut. Do that. Now, as I added this tool four, and in here it's tool four, if I move this, it's tool seven. If I want this to be tool one and then sort my ops, we're back running. Now, now it's going to drill the hole first. Rewind, and then do the milling activities. So drop and dragging tools and moving them out of sequence uh, and sorting ops, a couple clicks and you're ready to go. It's a pretty uh, smooth uh, way of sorting and getting back uh, where you need to get to. We pretty much got our part done other than a couple little bowl hole patterns. I'm going to call these, uh, these are the four, whoop, four 40 holes. Um, we're going to draw a couple uh, bow hole patterns. It's going to be a point bow hole. I do have one at three and a half, and it is a 1.375 eight hole pattern on the left. We have a zero, and it is a, uh, a 1.25 divided by two pattern with four holes, and the first hole is at zero. Now, processes are things for common things, and threads are common. We have a process library called the Tool Grid that we give all our customers and has all the counter bores for hold down bolts. We have a steer drill chart, so if you want to find a, a drill, you can find it. 
with the proper name and listing. Taps with combination center drills from odd 80 up to inch and a half and millimeters that convert into inches. Little tap library here for cut taps with aluminum speeds and feeds for aerospace type threads. I'll just bring in a 440, select all my points and do it, and we just spot drilled and tapped our hole, our holes. If you want to reorganize the sorting method, you can select them in the order you want to drill them, or go to sort and maybe close this next hole. I'll do the uh, X minus side and maybe uh, Y minus. Do it, restore it, redo it, reorganize the pattern. So it starts on this side and works its way around. Uh, this pretty much um, gets us done through the milling of this part, and um, we're done. But in the in a real world, a blueprint, a good Gibbs guy, you know, it's a 10 minute part, and we got this thing done. If even that especially with process knowledge that we can reuse. And if you do want to see your tool holders, you can hit the tool holder button. You can actually see your tool holders, and it will cushion detect all your holders. Like this holder tool here, while we're sticking out way too far, I can shorten that up. The flute length doesn't have to be so much in definition. And then rewind it. It'll update my tool. Now we have a short little tool. Except my tool is going to be... Um, right rubbing on it, so I want to make that a little higher. Rewind it, and we can see what that definition looks like. So you can get all your definitions uh, exact here, and Toolist will reflect that as well. Well, the part's pretty much done here. We can go post it and make code, get runtime reports, tool lists, and whatnot. We have a 6 minute, 54 second cut time. You can see all your times accumulated and all the data for each operation. Um, to post the code, we hit the machine button, hit the little machine icon, and we can load in a post processor. Um, there is a large library of posts in GibbsCam, over uh, 8,000 post processors. I believe it's the largest library in the world. But all the different machine types that are out there are ready for you. Uh, it's a rare day when we don't have a post for somebody. Save the program somewhere. I'll just save it on my desktop. I'll just make one part process it. Here's my code file. These are some header comments. You can filter the comments off and preferences. Um, each operation is listed what it's doing. My work group comment, my tool comment, the tool definition or an extra tool comment as well. There's all our G code. Now if we want to make more than one part, we can tell we want two parts. Fixture offsets, one tool all part, clearance plane between them, process it. Now we made code file for two parts. This post is using the uh, whatever number I use for my, my directory, my file. I'm going to use the next number up. It can be any algorithm, anything you'd like it to be. And most of these posts are working just fine. And if you need edits and changes on them, we can modify it exactly how you'd like it to be. Well, that kind of concludes the posting part of it and the machining and um, basic little mill demonstration from a solid model. Um, it's, it's easy to use, it's, it's fast to use, and uh, helps us out, save a lot of time and money. Um, other than that, um, just want to close here. Um, if you have any questions, call Midwest Camp Solutions. We can help you out with all your questions uh, and help you out with all your programming problems. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day, and thanks for watching the demonstration. Bye now.